Welcome to our special coverage of the 2024 Lexus LC500, which will support your future shopping decisions. Now let's get started. With its jaw-dropping good looks and exquisite V8 engine, the Lexus LC500 convertible is a unique vehicle. It is not going to last indefinitely. If you're a bit of a badge snob, this is a very special car that might go unnoticed. For many years, the flagship sports vehicle and grand tourer of the Lexus brand has been the LC. It was first unveiled in 2016, and in 2017, it made its Australian debut in coupe form. Launched locally in 2020, the flagship convertible under Testier was unveiled in 2019. The thunderous 5.0-liter, naturally aspirated V8 co-developed with Yamaha is exclusive to this version, which is only available in Australia. The LC is a special order vehicle in Australia, much like the flagship LS Limousine. So you can't just pick one up at random. Rather than waiting a little bit longer for it to come, you could talk about the purchasing procedure with your dealer. Lexus has given the LC a minor update for 2024 that includes a number of new features and a price increase to match. However, before we go any further, if you enjoy this content, please support this channel by liking it and clicking the like and subscribe button below. This will help YouTube understand your preferences and allow you to receive new video updates whenever they are uploaded on this channel. Regards, let's move forward. The most notable addition to the update is the 12.3-inch infotainment system from Lexus, which now supports both wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a new exterior paint color scheme, additional safety gear, and connected services are among the other changes. Although it isn't a sensible purchase, this kind of automobile is among the least expensive Grand Tourers that still has a naturally aspirated V8 engine. What is the outcome in 2024? There has been a price increase for the Lexus LC series due to a recent update. Here for testing is the premium LC500 convertible, which is now the third most expensive Lexus available in Australia, priced at $220,888 before on-roads. After the LX600 Ultra Luxury, $219,061 before on-roads, and the LM500 Hours Ultra Luxury, you know you have the keys to something very remarkable as soon as you approach the Lexus LC500 convertible. There's no doubting the car's stunning exterior and interior design. Your passengers might get confused at first by the disguised door handles. Upon first unlocking the car, they spring out, but they eventually close back up. To make them appear again, you have to click the unlock button or push the handle out. Being a Grand Tourer GT, this vehicle is naturally low slung, so you'll need to take a few steps to get in. It's a little difficult to climb out because of the four sills height. People who have trouble getting in and out of this car should definitely give it a try. That whole dream of buying a car like this is dashed when you strain yourself trying to get in and out of it every now and again. The size of the doors is another factor to consider when stepping in and out. The door wouldn't open far enough to lock into its first position. So several times throughout my week-long loan, I had to keep my hand against it to make sure it didn't hit the car park next to me. As soon as you walk in, a nice leather scent hits you in the face. The door cards and other parts of the cabin are covered in leather, while everything else appears to be made of high-grade plastic or metal. This automobile is built without any compromises. Standard features include elegant chairs with subtle aniline leather accents and a subtle stitch pattern. Given the availability of ochre and white and blue two-tone possibilities, the most common, and arguably the most boring, finish for our tester was black. With lots of side bolstering to keep you securely in place, the front chairs are incredibly soft and cozy. Let me say that after adjusting the lumbar support, I was able to find a comfortable position even though my lower back did initially become sore from driving to and from the office. When the convertible roof is up and the driver's seat is adjusted low, visibility may be a bit limited. Luckily, this issue can be avoided by opening the convertible roof, which is what I did the majority of the time the LC was ours. Why not? The heated and ventilated front seats come as standard. In colder weather, the former is essential when driving with the convertible soft top folded down. A neck warmer is also included as standard equipment, and it serves the purpose of keeping your neck warm in colder climates. If you ignore the V8 engine, this is one of the best aspects of the LC500 convertible that I love. One small complaint I have with this vehicle is that the infotainment system controls the neck warmer, steering wheel heating, and seat heating slash ventilation. 
While the center tunnel does have a shortcut button, adjusting the parameters requires poking at the screen. With the abundance of buttons in the car for various tasks, I would much rather have physical buttons for these functionalities. If you've driven a modern Lexus vehicle, the steering wheel in front of the driver will look extremely familiar. As could be assumed, it is covered in plush, silky leather, and has heating capabilities. The physical buttons on the steering wheel are all arranged properly and have a nice click. Here, there is no learning curve. In comparison to its high-tech competitors, the digital instrument cluster behind the steering wheel is beginning to appear a little antiquated. But it still features neat animations when the car is turned on and the drive modes are changed. These make it appear somewhat new, and the motorized digital rev counter pays homage to the venerable LFA supercar in a stylish way. The head-up display, which is visible even through polarized sunglasses, is mounted atop the dashboard. Its crucial LED shows both a digital rev gauge and your current speed. A touchscreen infotainment system is eventually installed on the moving across the LC. The outdated 10.3-inch display, which could not enable touch capabilities, has been replaced with this modern 12.3-inch device. For anyone who have driven a recent Lexus or Toyota car, the new 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system should look familiar. It has a bright appearance, seems to have good resolution, and has an extremely user-friendly UI. With this upgrade, the trackpad is no longer available, whether you liked it or not. A sizable circular volume dial and track and volume switches have taken its place. This update also removed the analog clock that was mounted on the dashboard. Now that wireless Apple CarPlay is standard, the LC still only features wired Android Auto. During the week I had the loan, I got only one or two dropouts with my iPhone 15 Pro Max connected wirelessly, which isn't ideal but not uncommon. The absence of a wireless charger in the LC is a drawback, as it can rapidly deplete your phone's battery during extended road trips, something you will undoubtedly want to do with this vehicle. In order to counteract this, you will need to keep your phone's battery charged by plugging it into a USB connector in the small center cubby box. Included as standard is satellite navigation, which is really helpful if you need to find your way home, even after your phone dies. Additionally, it has an internet connection now so you can see real-time traffic. The LC's inside is excellent, as I mentioned before. There isn't a single instance of glossy piano black finishes or cheap-feeling plastic. Every button has a nice click sound when pressed, even the climate control buttons. Everything is covered, including the cup holders, which feel luxurious with their soft close feature. One of my favorite lids is the convertible controls lid, which functions something like a missile strike flap. Even before you look at the second row, Storage is limited in the LC. There are tiny door bins and only two cup holders, one in front of the gear selector and another usually concealed by the sliding center cubby lid. Although the LC is officially equipped with two back seats, they feel more like a formality and a place to store additional items that won't fit in the boot. This is because, when the driver's seat was adjusted to my liking, it pressed up on the back seat. I made a valiant effort to squeeze into the second row for the sake of it. Headroom is severely limited when the convertible roof is up, and the seat itself is extremely rigid and stiff. There is also no legroom. Fortunately, retracting the convertible roof will help with this final issue. The boot of the LC500 convertible is absurdly little around the back. A 149-liter boot capacity is the official value provided by Lexus. You'll have to put down a set of golf clubs if you want to carry one. Even my small work backpack had to be folded flat to fit. The co-developed 5.0-liter naturally aspirated V8 petrol engine with Yamaha continues to power the Lexus LC500. Although it is limited to the coupe body form, a V6 hybrid option is still available. The 5.0-liter V8 engine of the Lexus LC500 convertible has an incredibly addicting 2000 rm flare when it first fires up. Not so loud as to make your neighbors detest you, but just loud enough for them to notice you. The V8 engine achieves a lovely subdued sound when it idles down after somewhat warming up. It seems like an extremely intelligent creature that is simply itching to be freed. The engine's limited revs prevent damage if you start driving while it's still warming up to operational temperature. Luckily, there are no problems when driving on a daily basis because of this. When you finally release this beast of a chain, the V8 roars to life and rips all the way to red line. 
A trumpet then stumble approaching a crescendo is heard when the engine revs from 4500 to 5000 rupum and beyond. The LC500's precise, crisp V8 rumble can also be heard more clearly when the convertible roof is opened. Even though it was chilly outside, I made an effort to do this whenever I could while driving throughout my week-long loan. All of the heaters were used at this point. You can adjust the level of noise depending on how much throttle you apply to the LC500 because of its active exhaust system. However, use caution because if you apply excessive force to the accelerator at low speeds, the rear tires may spin. Fortunately, traction control will prevent this from happening. The engine, transmission, suspension, and other components can all be calibrated differently with the help of the numerous drive modes available, which include normal, eco, comfort, sport, sport S, and individual. The LC500 convertible excels when traveling at greater speeds on twisty roads. You get the airflow, which makes it even better when the roof is folded down. Fortunately, the cabin has a wind deflector, so it's not too windy inside. When driven purposefully, the LC500 convertible can be extremely lively. In tight turns, the car has ample grip to make it feel lightning fast and feels quite sturdy. It's preferable to engage the manual transmission option and take charge during these exciting driving situations. When the car comes close to redline, it makes one of the greatest sounds I've ever heard. You find yourself wanting to hear it more and more, almost like an archaic. However, if you have a passenger with you, they might not appreciate how unnerving the dynamic driving can be. Fortunately, there is a comfort driving mode that you may choose and things calm down soon. The LC500 convertible's adaptive cruise control isn't the best in terms of safety. Speed Sign Assist, which enables simple change between preset speeds, using the buttons on the steering wheel is said by Lexus to have increased its capability. The adaptive cruise control system still won't break when you're traveling downhill, despite this being useful. Up until you apply the stop pedal or let gravity take over, it will just keep banging and bonging. These days, a lot of systems have this capability or can shift down and use engine braking more effectively. Additionally, when a car joins in front of you, the adaptive cruise control applies strong braking. You won't want to utilize the cruise control unless you're on an open road with no other cars because this gives you a startling experience when driving. The vehicle's lane keep assist system jerks a lot when the driver engages the steering wheel. I would rather not use it because it also gets a little confused on curving routes. It would be much better if I took charge and drove such a gorgeous car. The LC500 convertible also boasts extremely brilliant LED headlights. When driving at night in rural and regional areas and keeping an eye out for animals by the side of the road, these come in quite handy. The lack of a matrix or adaptive high beam feature is the only drawback of the LED headlights. Although auto high beam exists, it only has the ability to switch the full light on or off. And what do you receive? One fully loaded model of the 2024 Lexus LC 500 convertible is offered. A free three-year Lexus Connected Services subscription is now included with the 2024 Lexus LC lineup. Owners can view the Odonda reading, fuel level, kilometers to empty, recent trip information, and the last known location of the car with the use of an integrated data connection module, DZM, and the Lexus Connected smartphone app. The open slash close state of the windows, doors, boot, and bonnet may also be remotely checked by owners. If the danger lights are left on or any of these are left open, the app has the ability to send out a notification. The ability to remotely start the engine and lock and unlock the doors are two further connected service capabilities. For the time being, we will end this briefing there. I appreciate you observing. We sincerely hope you would schedule some time to join us when this channel's next video goes live.